Okay, so today we will discuss uh, the lizard which we have stated yesterday, and we saw the existence of the Riemann integral, uh, Riemann Stirling integral, and in a particular case, a Riemann integral. All alpha we have taken the class of all Riemann stresses integrals. So, if f belongs to f belongs to all alpha means f is an element of the re class all alpha that is a Riemann stresses integral integral functions if and only if for every f sin l greater than 0 there exists a partition there exists a partition. there exists a partition p there exists a partition p such that such that the upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha minus the lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha over this partition is less than f sin l. So, for every epsilon greater than there exists a partition which this condition holds. So, this condition is a if and only if condition let it be put it the condition as say 1. <coughs> so, let us see the proof. Uh, suppose the condition holds suppose 1 hold that is uh, this uh, some for some partition for a given epsilon we can identify a partition. So, that this result uh, u uh, upper sum minus lower sum is less than f sin Okay. Now, for any partition p we know or we have the lower sum of the function f with respect to the alpha where alpha is a monotonic function defined over the interval a b. Okay. So, uh, this is less than equal to the lower sum of the function lower integral of the function f which is less than equal to the upper integral of the upper Riemann stretch integral of the function f which is less than equal to the upper sum of the function f over alpha. This we have already uh, discussed because how to define the lower integral and upper integral of the lower Riemann stretch integral of this is defined as the supremum value of the lower sum f with respect to the alpha, while the upper Riemann stretch integral of the function f is defined as the infimum of the upper sum of f with respect to alpha. So, if I remove infimum and suprema, then this quantity will always be greater than e, uh, the upper sum will always be, be greater than or equal to the upper integral, while lower sum will always be less than equal to the lower integral. So, for any partition p, this result holds. Okay. Now, using the condition 1, condition 1 what the condition 1 says that there exists a partition p such that the difference between the upper sum and lower sum is less than epsilon this is given. So, since this result 2 is true for any partition. So, in particular this particular partition the upper sum minus lower sum will remain less than epsilon. Therefore, using this we see here that 0 is less than or equal to upper integral Riemann stretch integral minus the lower Riemann stretch integral, uh, this remain less than epsilon because this difference is less than epsilon. So, this and this is non negative because the upper sum and lower sum is defined the maximum value m i and delta alpha and so on, where alpha is a monotonic function. Okay. So, we are getting for that clear. So, we get this less than epsilon, but epsilon is arbitrary number, but epsilon is an arbitrary number. So, once it is arbitrary it can choose any for any epsilon however small this result hold. So, this shows that lower integral and the upper integral Riemann stretch integral coincide and once they coincide th then this implies that f belongs to the class R alpha the Riemann stretch integrable functions. So, this one. conversely 
suppose f belongs to class of all Riemann stretches integrable functions, then we have to show the condition one holds. Now, once f belongs to Riemann stretch integral, it means upper sum and lower sum coincide and equal to this. So, what we get from here the upper sum is the infimum value of this okay, and lower sum is the uh, it's infimum uh, and lower integral upper in, uh, integral is the infimum value and lower integral is the supremum value of this. So, suppose I take this uh, uh, f belongs to r means that lower integral and the upper integral both coincide first thing okay, they are equal. Now, use this thing if I remove the infimum then what happens is because this is the infimum value. So, this will remain less than is this value. So, if I take a number slightly higher than this then there will exist a partition P 2 where this value will plus F sin L will be greater than this number. Similarly, here if I remove this supremum because this is the largest value. So, this is greater than equal to this number. So, if I take a number slightly lower than this lower than this then there exists a partition where this number is greater than the number this minus some number f sin L by 2. So, there exists by the definition definition I am calling definition A okay. definition uh, we, can, uh, we can say uh, that uh, let f sin l greater than 0 is given. So, with this f sin l there exist or there exist partitions partitions say p 1 and p 2 such that such that the upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p 2 minus integral f d alpha is less than f sin l by 2 and lower sum of this uh, integral integral f d alpha minus lower sum of f with respect to alpha over partition p 1 is less than f sin l by 2. This we can get it this. So, let it be equation say third. Now, if we take the common partition let p is the p 1 union p 2. Okay. So, if we take the refinement of this this is the refinement of p 1 and p 2. So, if this is that holds for this then for the refinement also we can get this uh, general result what we get so upper sum since p is the refinement of p 1 p 2. So, upper sum decreases and lower sum increases this we have already dis discussed. So, we start with this upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p which is the refinement of p 1 p 2. Since upper sum decreases, so this is the less than equal to upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p 2. Further using the 3 the upper sum of this is less than integral f d alpha plus f sin l by 2 is it not. Now, using the second part of this 3 integral f d alpha is less than further lower sum of p 1 f alpha plus f sin l by 2. So, this is less than f sin plus f sin l. Okay. So, what we get it from here we get this that u p f alpha minus l L okay. Uh, one more thing is because this part lower partition uh, lower sum increases for the refinement. So, this is further less than L p f alpha plus f sin l. So, this minus this f alpha is less than f sin l at least this is true for this partition p. <coughs> so, there exists a partition p so, there exist a partition P for which condition 1 holds and that proves the results. Okay. 
So, this now this results gives a guarantee or criteria for a function f to be Riemann stretch is integrable function if the upper sum minus lower sum is less than h for some partition p. In particular, when alpha x equal to x, then you can get the corresponding corollary as a corollary if alpha x is identically x, then f belongs to R, the Riemann stretch is integral, Riemann sorry, Riemann integral if and only if, if and only if there exists a partition P such for given f signal, for given f signal greater than 0, there exists a partition P such that upper sum of the function P f minus the lower sum of the function f with respect to partition P is less than f signal and this is f and only part for the existence result for the Riemann integral function, integral functions. So, this is proof is ok, ok as a corollary we can get. Now, from this result we can derive few more conditions uh, where we can say is a sometimes sufficient condition, sometimes necessary condition for the func function to be in Riemann stresses integral or in particular Riemann integral. So, we have this theorem. The theorem says in the three parts a if one holds if condition one holds one hold means the condition that is there exists a part that is for every f signal greater than 0 there exist there exist a partition p partition p such that upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha minus lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha is less than f sin. So, if this condition holds for some this condition holds for some partition p and some f sin holds for some partition p and for this is one I mean, okay and for some f sin l greater than 0 then the condition 1 holds with the same f sin l with the same f sin l for every refinement of p of the partition p means the condition one says that there exists some partition for a give every f sin l there exists a partition. Now, what he says is if suppose this result hold for some partition for this f sin l then for the same particular f sin l this result will hold for any refinement if we uh, take a refinement of p say p star then this result will continue to hold good. Okay. The proof uh, of course, is simple uh, let me see the proof uh, in case of let p star be the refinement of p with the same f sin l with the same f sin l greater than 0 this f sin l we are having the partition which is the refinement of p ok f sin l I am not changing refinement of p, but when p star is the refinement of p the upper sum decreases and lower sum increases. So, upper sum of this is greater than equal to the upper sum of this partition uh, of f with respect to alpha over the partition p star and the lower sum of this is increases this decrease increases. So, minus of this will decrease. So, L of p star f alpha, but this is less than f sin it is given. So, this implies that 
upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p star minus the lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p star is less than f sin r where the p star is the refinement of is true so hold so this proves that second result says if one holds if the condition if condition one hold holds for the partition p say x naught x1 x2 say xn and if and if si and ti is suppose uh, are the arbitrary points are arbitrary points in the interval x i minus 1 x i then the sigma of this f of s i minus f of t i under modular sign multiply by delta alpha i is less than f sin r i is 1 to n 1 to n this is true. So, it means if this is the partition of a b interval and if this is the point say x i minus 1 this is the point say x i and if we picked up the two point s i and t i and t i in this sub interval x i minus 1 to x i then the functional value at the point s i minus t i sigma of this multiply by delta alpha i is less than epsilon that that's what is says that if the function if the condition one holds that is if there exist for a epsilon or greater than 0 if there exist a partition such that the this upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon r, then it will also imply that this condition will hold. The reason is again very simple the proof is giving like this uh, what is our f f of s i and it now since f of s i and f of t i both are both belongs to the interval m i into n capital m i we are what is m i n capital m i we are m i is the infimum value of the function f x when x less than greater than equal to x i minus 1 and less than equal to x i and capital m i is the supremum value of the function f x when x lies in the interval x i minus 1 to x i. So, both these values are in the interval m i and capital m i. So, if we start with this say uh, uh, upper sum and the lower sum, what is the upper sum? Upper sum is uh, f of s i minus uh, lower sum. So, what we get it uh, f of um, uh, s i sigma. So, consider this thing so, i is 1 to n mod of s i minus f of t i consider this multiply by delta alpha i. Now, f i and s i is one of the value is value lying between this. So, both are lying between m i and capital m i. So, clearly f s i f s i and minus f t i mod of this will remain less than or equal to m i minus small m i minus small m i is it not. So, we can say this is less than equal to less than equal to sigma m i minus small m i uh, is 1 to n delta alpha i, but this is nothing but what the difference of the upper sum minus lower sum with respect to the partition p upper sum uh, minus lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p. Okay. And this already given by condition 1 
because condition 1 holds. So, this is true by condition 1. So, this is therefore, this sum will be less than this. So, this proves the proves. Now, third portion which he says if suppose if f is Riemann stress is integral with respect to alpha and uh, the hypothesis of B and the hypothesis hypothesis of B that is sigma of this thing is less than epsilon for uh, partition P x naught x 1 x 2 and S i T i are the point in between this x i minus 1 and x i then and then this condition holds this hypothesis is, is given hold this hypothesis hold then sigma of sigma of f t i delta alpha i minus integral a to b f d alpha <coughs> is less than f sin is less than f sin that is all ok i is 1 to n 1 to n. So, uh, proof is let me see uh, the proof we will start with again similar way what start with the lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p this is equal to sigma i is 1 to n uh, small m i delta alpha i, but m i is the infimum value of this function. So, obviously, this will remain less than equal to the value of the function f t i, where t i lies between where t i lies between x i minus 1 to x i. These are the, this is the point. So, i is 1 to n and then delta alpha i. But again, this value is less than equal to its maximum value, so it will be less than equal to less than equal to sigma i is one to n m of i delta alpha i because this is the supremum value of this function, and which is nothing but what upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over the partition p. So this is the one result. So this shows that is the lower sum of f with respect to alpha this satisfy this condition let it be 4. Okay. Further the upper lower sum of this because f is given to be Riemann integrable function. So, the supremum value of this will coincide the integral f d alpha. So, if I remove supremum it is less than equal to this and again the infimum value of the upper sum is this. So, this is less than equal to in upper sum of f with respect to alpha this is this holds for any partition p is it not. So, if I take the 4 and 5 together then what we get if you take the 4 and 5. So, 4 and 5 together imply this difference if I take this difference I take then what happen is the difference is coming to be 0 in fact, tending to 0 is very very small because u p alpha minus l alpha is less than epsilon. The condition in the hypothesis 2 condition uh, hypothesis 2 holds means the condition 1 holds 1 holds means difference of u minus l is less than epsilon. So, difference of this minus this is less than epsilon in absolute value implies i is 1 to n uh, 1 to n uh, then f of t i take this difference. Okay. Uh, m i and this uh, uh, I will say here this part you can take it here okay. and then again this is less than. So, we need this part. So, less than f of t i minus minus integral f d alpha modulus of this uh, that is uh, sigma of this under this modulus of this is less than f sin holds. Okay. Now, this result also suggests uh, the way to define the uh, Riemann integral or Riemann stress integral, because we have discussed the definition of the Riemann integral and Riemann stress integral uh, by constructing the lower sum 
and the upper sum and then finding the suprema infimum value and if the lower integral and upper integral coincide then we say f is Riemann integrable function Riemann stress integral and when alpha x equal to x then it is the Riemann integral function. Now, in most of the books earlier if you see they do not take it to the upper sum and lower sum what they, they start with the function f define over the interval a b okay, and then functions uh, we zoom to be a continuous function bounded function sometimes and then what we they do is they partition the interval find out the point in the sub interval take the value of f of t i and then multiply this by the delta alpha i. So, the delta alpha i is left is it delta alpha i this is left. So, multiply delta alpha i and taking the limit when n is sufficiently large it means when the number of the partitions are more uh, infinity and four. So, when the points are very close to each other then this integral limit exists we call it this integral of the f d alpha and the existence and we say the integral exists. So, this is the way of defining the Riemann integral or Riemann stasis integral uh, clear. So, however, the both way equivalent way of defining, but here this is a more better way because <coughs> you are explicitly uh, explicitly you are constructing the sum and then seeing the things because this will go like this. If suppose I have a graph of the function say like this suppose this is our a this is our b and let us partition it partition it okay. So, this will be our partition and like this. Now, when you are choosing the value then what you are doing is you are constructing this sum in this interval you are taking the infimum value of the function. So, this is the infimum value of the function over this interval. So, you are taking this then infimum value in this interval you are taking this sum infimum value on this and, and total sum you are choosing and then changing the partition over this and basically uh, after this changing etcetera we will get this uh, limit when the supremum and infimum value coincide then we say the integral function is integrable. And what is the upper sum? Upper sum in this case will be this much when you take second upper integral this is the lower integral will give and upper integral uh, upper sum will give this part. Okay. So, here also this is uh, the in this interval the upper sum is this. So, we can take this one okay, like this and continue this one. So, when you choose the limiting value they basically the upper lower upper sum decrease it and lower sum will increase and they will coincide with this total area bounded by this curve. If the function is continuous it represents the area bounded by the curve by equal to f x and the ordinate x equal to a and x equal to v with the axis of x. In case of the bounded functions we say it is a enhancement of the definite integral and we say call it as a Riemann integral for this okay. and when we take up the alpha x as a monotonic function in, and then choosing the in values of x i and x i minus at the point uh, with respect to alpha then you get the Riemann stasis integral. So, that is the difference between these three concepts however, the way in which it is defined is basically gives the other definition whatever the in terms of the upper sum lower sum or directly also as a limit of this sum. But since limit of this sum is difficult to compute the Riemann uh, any integral because the partition is more important when you take the limit of the sum of uh, the right hand side because it becomes an infinite series. So, once you get the infinite series then what happens is the sum of the infinite series will be difficult unless you choose a proper partitioning point and looking the proper partitioning point with respect to the function is not so easy. So, that is why we try to avoid that part limit of the sum to compute the Riemann stasis integral or Riemann integral we take up upper sum and lower sum and taking the infimum and supremum value. So, that is what is it. Okay. So, this is the uh, uh, one uh, existing slider. Now, let us see few functions which are always be Riemann integral functions like a continuous function they are always a Riemann integral functions 
and some other case. So, let us take the <laughs> various types of the integrable Riemann integrable function, okay. various type various types. So, first theorem is if f is if f is continuous f is continuous on a closed interval a b a b uh, then f is Riemann stress is integral with respect to alpha on a b this is ok. So, let us see the proof alpha is giving to be a monotonic functions. So, once it is alpha is giving to monotonic alpha is monotonic function either increasing or decreasing defined over the interval a b. So, alpha a alpha b these are finite values finite values ok alpha n finite values and now alpha b minus alpha l is a fixed number. So, what let f sin l greater than 0 let f sin l greater than 0 uh, be given. Now, since alpha b minus alpha is a finite quantity, so we can identify some eta such that so choose eta greater than 0 such that alpha b minus alpha a multiply by eta is less than epsilon. This is possible because these are the fixed value finite values. So, we can choose the eta to be epsilon over this number and since it is monotonic either increasing or decreasing. So, it cannot be alpha a equal to alpha b okay, unless it is a constant function which we are not taking. Okay. So, we get this one less than epsilon. Further since f is continuous on the closed and compact and closed and bounded interval this is a closed and bounded. So, every continuous function on a closed and bounded set is all in a compact set is uniformly continuous. So, this shows is since f is going to show it is uniformly continuous on the interval a b this one is given. So, apply the definition of uniform continuity. So, there exists. So, for given f sin l, so for given f sin l, the same f sin l greater than z, there exists a delta, there is this delta positive, it does not depend on the point such that the value of this functional value f x minus f t remain less than eta for all x and t, x and t uh, in the interval if x belongs to the interval a b, t belongs to the interval a b and such that mod of x minus t is less than delta. This is by definition of the uniform continuity of the function. So, since f is uniformly continuous, it means if we pick up any two point in the interval a b, which satisfy this condition that x minus t is less than delta that is in the delta neighborhood of the point t or any then images will fall in the eta neighborhood of f t that is this eta uh, this uh, say uh, I think it is less than f sin l this is less than eta will come ok fine. Uh, now, choose the partition p now if p is any partition any partition of the interval a b such that such that delta x i is less than delta delta x i is less than delta for all i for all i. It means we are taking the partition a b as x naught less than x 1 less than x 2 and less than x n equal to b. So, here is the point say x i minus 1 x i. Okay. So, this delta x i is x i minus x i minus 1. 
Now, this delta x i is less because we are choosing the partition less than. So, this is positive if the length of this is less than delta for all i for all i we are there. Now, if we picked up any point inside this delta x i then what happens the image is functional value at the point x i minus m i this difference will remain less than uh, eta because of this because any point x y which is less than lying between this interval lying between this interval x i minus x i minus 1 or t i if this is that corresponding images will be there. So, the maximum value and the minimum value of the function will also satisfy this condition if the point is here in the closed interval x i minus 1 and x i and function attains the maximum and minimum value then they have to follow this result. So, because of the so because of because of f uniform continuous uniform continu because of uniform continuity of f we get we have m i minus small m i is less than or equal to eta for i equal to 1 to up to m is it ok. Now, consider this <coughs> we want this uh, we want the function is a Riemann stretch integral it means we, have, we wanted to use that result that if the upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon f for some partition for a given epsilon f, there exists some partition such that upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon f, then the function f must be a Riemann stretch integral. So, let us consider choose the partition p first and then consider the upper sum of the function f with respect to alpha over this partition p minus lower sum of the function f with respect to this partition. Now, this is by definition is nothing but i equal to 1 to n m i capital m i minus small m i delta alpha i is it ok. Now, what is this is already given to be less than eta. So, eta and sigma i equal to 1 to n delta alpha i is it nothing but the what this is the value of alpha at the point means uh, i is 1. So, delta alpha 1 means x alpha x 1 minus alpha x naught plus alpha x 2 minus alpha x. So, all gets cancelled and finally, you are getting to be eta alpha b minus alpha a, but we have chosen the for epsilon we have taken the eta in such a way that this is less than epsilon. So, this shows this implies f belongs to the Riemann stretches integral with respect to alpha and that is proved the result. So, every continuous function is a Riemann stretch integral and in particular every continuous function is a Riemann integral function. Next shows that is also uh, if f is a monotonic function f is monotone if f is monotonic on the closed interval a b and if alpha is a continuous function is continuous. Now, apart from this alpha is also monotone remember this I need not to write because we are assuming this is already monotone function, but every monotone function need not be continuous throughout. So, here we are assuming exclusively alpha to be a continuous apart from its monotonicity on the closed interval say a b. Then f is Riemann stress integral or f belongs to the class in. Okay. Let us see the proof of this again. So, it means the monotonic functions if f is monotonic and alpha is continuous then this will be a Riemann stress integral. Now, in case of the Riemann integral function alpha x we are choosing already x. So, over the closed interval a b if you check alpha x equal to x it is automatically a continuous function and it is a monotonic function. So, basically it satisfies this condition. So, you need not to take this condition when you are dealing with the Riemann integral what simply say every monotonic functions on the closed interval a b is Riemann integral function, <coughs> but in case of this. Uh, we have to take a condition on alpha as it is. Let us see the proof of it. 
let f sin l greater than 0 be given. Be given, then uh, again because alpha is continuous, so it will resume all the values from alpha a to alpha b. It will resume all values. Therefore, we can partition it delta alpha. We can choose the uh, equal partition alpha b minus alpha a by n as a n partition for this with sub partition of the interval a b like this. So we can choose that. Uh, so, for a any positive integer, for any positive integer n, for any positive integer n, choose choose uh, a partition, choose a partition p in such a way such that such that the alpha b minus alpha a divided by n is our delta alpha i alpha b minus when i is 1 to n means equal part delta alpha 1 is the same as delta alpha 2 is the same as this and the value is alpha b minus and this is possible b possible since alpha is continuous if alpha is not continuous it means that there is some point in between a and b the function alpha may not be defined at that point. So, we cannot talk about all these things. So, since it is continuous therefore, all the values in between alpha and alpha b is possible therefore, we can divide it and get the equal values of delta alpha i. Okay. Now, suppose f is monotone this is given f is monotone. So, let f is monotony increasing function monotonically increasing function. The similar case when monotonically decreasing function will can be proved in a similar way. So, there will be. So, once it is monotonically increasing function it means when you choose a to b partition as x naught x 1 x 2 x i minus 1 x i and x n is b then value of the function at a point x i is, is greater than the value of the function at a point x i. So, over the interval x i to x i minus 1 the m i the maximum value of the function will attain at the point x i while the minimum value will attain at the point x i minus 1 because it is increasing function monotonically increasing function and this is true for every i i 1 to n. Okay. Now, consider the upper sum of the function f over this partition minus lower sum of the function f with respect to alpha over this partition. Now, this will be equal to what? If you write this thing is sigma i is equal to 1 to n uh, m i minus a small m i into delta alpha i, but m i minus a small f m i is this one. So, we are taking delta alpha i we are choosing same it is independent of i. So, we can take it outside by n and this sum i is equal to 1 to n what you are getting is f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 this is the value. Now, this when you substitute i equal to 1 to n the terms get cancelled and only you get the f v minus f a. So, finally, you are getting alpha b minus alpha a by n f b multiplied by f b minus f a this you are getting. Now, this one is less than f sin l uh, this follows from oh, uh, f b uh, condition is okay. this is a small quantity alpha b minus alpha a is less than this. Now, this part when you are taking is uh, less than f sin l given why. So, if you are taking this alpha b minus alpha a by n f b minus f a and this divide by n. So, n is sufficiently large. Okay. So, we can take this is less than f sin l as n is taking sufficiently large. If 
n is taking sufficiently large. Okay. So, when n is sufficiently large, the total thing can be made less than epsilon r. Therefore, it satisfies the condition 1, which is necessary and sufficient condition for a function f to be in the class r alpha. So, this shows f belongs to r alpha. Okay. So, that is what uh, another results which we Uh, so, every monotonic functions now we come to the f is bounded function suppose f is bounded on a close interval a b and f h only finitely many finitely many uh, points of discontinuities discontinuities on the interval a b on the interval a b and alpha is continuous at every point continuous at every point at every point at which f is f is discontinuous f is discontinuous then f is a will be an element of r alpha that is f will be a riemann stasis so what is so is a b interval is given the function is given to be bounded on this but at a point of uh, say these are the points this is the point of discontinuities these are the points of discontinuities of f but the and finite number these are finite points of discontinuity not infinite number it's a finite number of points are there which say point of discontinuity and what is given is at these points alpha is a joint at these points alpha is continuous that is very important part if alpha is also discontinuous at this point then this result will not hold that we will see by proving we can easily get uh, uh, easily see the region if both the alpha and f has the same point of discontinuity over the interval a b then the f cannot be in r alpha this result will not hold only this result hold when the function is discontinuous at the point alpha must be a continuous at that point so this is the very uh, very important point here to prove okay let's see the proof of this let f sin r greater than 0 be given given. Now, since f is bounded, so let us see the supremum value of f x is suppose m. This is the supremum value. Now, let E be the set of E be the set of points at which at which f is discontinuous f which f is discontinuous okay now since e is finite because it's given that function f is has a finitely many point of discontinuity so since set e is finite so we can cover e by so we can cover e by means of a finitely many disjoint intervals by by finitely many disjoint intervals intervals uh, say u j b j 
finite many disjoint interval which is a subset of a b because these are what a, uh, these are the point of discontinuities so uh, only a scattered point is isolated points we can cover it by means of these intervals okay like this say u1 uj vj this is the interval covering now since function f is giving to be continuous at this point so it means by definition of the continuity if i look that definition of the continuity what happens uh, say this is the interval okay so at this point the function is continuous it means for a given f sin r greater than 0 if i check say alpha is this point then at this point alpha and for any number say f sin l by n suppose these are n points are there so i can choose the f sin l by n say interval length so that all the points image of any point inside this interval is falling there so corresponding to this we can identify a length a delta neighborhood such that the image will fall so some of these uh, values alpha x minus this uh, alpha values at this interval can be made less than epsilon L because of the continuity. So, that is the advantage of alpha we taking to be as a continuous at the point where the function has a discontinuity. So, that is what. Okay. So, let us take the difference of them. Now, such that the sum of the corresponding difference is less. Okay. Now, since alpha is continuous at these points Okay, at this point. So, we can, so for a given f sin l, for given f sin l greater than 0, we can choose delta j such that, such that the sum of this, such that the corresponding difference is less than f sin l, such that the sum of the difference corresponding difference corresponding difference alpha v j minus alpha u j is less than epsilon. Let us see why. Uh, I will again repeat suppose this is the these are the points. So, let this point is covered by this interval u 1 v 1 here we are taking say u 2 v 2 here this is the point then u 3 v 3 and like this alpha is continuous alpha is continuous at this point. So, we can for a given f sin l greater than 0 we can identify here delta 1 delta 2 and so on such that image of this uh, for this f sin image of any point will fall within the epsilon neighborhood of this. So, what I am choosing is the total sum of this difference is less than epsilon. It means if the number is n then each one we can take epsilon by n. So, the total multiply by n will give this. So, that is what is getting. Okay. Now, we can replace these intervals in such a way. So, okay. now second step what we do is this is the first step second step what we do we can replace we can place these these intervals in such a way in such a way that every point every point uh, in such a way that every point of e intersection a b lies in the interior of interior of some interval u j v j. What is the meaning of this is E intersection a b this is the set of those points say say by i such that f is discontinuous at by i. Okay. So, now you are taking this uh, these points are enclosed by u 1 v 1 in such a way that each point of this lies in the middle of this in the interior of this. 
we can take up u 1 v 1 in such a way that the first point lies in y 1 in this e 2 v 2. So, there is a second lies in it and like this. So, this is the way we will construct and then proof will go. So, next time we will continue this proof. Okay. Thank you.